Welcome everyone to In the Spotlight. Joining me tonight is an incredibly talented artist who's also a tremendous YouTube and social media sensation who truly values and appreciates the connection she has with her followers and fans, Premier. Premier, welcome to the show and welcome to the spotlight. Period. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is absolutely my pleasure. And I can feel the positive energy coming from you just from what you just said. And that's one of the things that I love about the content that you put out. And I'm going to get to that in, in just a couple of minutes, Premier. But what I'd like to do is, as I mentioned in the intro, you have built an amazing following through a lot of hard work and a lot of great content. But for folks who maybe aren't as familiar with who you are or maybe aren't as familiar with your work, can you share a little bit about how your journey started and maybe some of the highlights of your journey thus far? Of course. Well, I'm Premier. I'm an artist. I'm a YouTuber. And I really got my start in the entertainment industry through dance. I've been dancing since I was two years old, all styles. And it really just got me used to being around music. I was also homeschooled, so I really was around nature a lot. And I was just had a very artistic brain, so... I would get in the studio at Boys and Girls Club and started making music. And ever since then, like, I got an acting agent and I really just got into being on camera because I always want to be at the center of attention. Well, one of the things that, that I notice is you're definitely well-rounded and diverse, and that comes through in in your videos and in the various content that you have. So it, it seems as though when the light comes on, you're you're already ready to go, aren't you? Yeah, you got to be. Honestly, I feel like you have to be in this career. Yeah, no, for sure. Because it comes to and it also helps when it's real and genuine, because when it's not, that comes through, too. Don't you think? I definitely think so. Like you can tell if someone's putting out product that they don't actually enjoy making. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's different for me because I've always wanted to do this. And everything that I'm putting out is myself and I'm not trying to copy no one. So along those lines, uh, one way that you demonstrate that is through your music. And it seems like it's it's really important for you to be true to who you are. And your music reflects that and, and how you share your story. And one thing in particular that really impressed me, because it's not something I've seen very often, is I've seen videos that you put out where you're kind of sharing the story behind the story, behind the lyrics of a song. Yeah. And, and I, I've, again, I, I don't know that I've ever really seen anyone do that the way you do it. So what inspired you to sort of share the story behind the song? And what's the reception been like thus far when you do it? Well, what inspired me to do it is this YouTube channel called Genius. And they basically like have artists come on their show and do exactly what I did, like describe the lyrics and just so that way everyone can know the lyrics and sing mm -hmm. along and really know what they were thinking when they wrote those lyrics down for the song. So that's what inspired me. But I feel like it's gotten really good feedback and my supporters have been really supportive. Like, I think it really helped them learn the lyrics to my songs and understand that it's because sometimes when you listen to a song, like you don't really understand the message unless you know music like that. So it's, I feel like it's really cool to like describe what the artist is feeling because everyone perceives a song differently. Like me and you could be listening to one song. And if the artist didn't explain what they were thinking when they wrote it, we would have a completely different perspective because it would be your perspective and mm. my perspective. Wow. That's, that's a great point. But I also think that it shows that you're just not, throwing words to music. You're writing songs where the lyrics mean something and it means something to you to share that story behind the lyrics, which I commend you for that as well. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Now, another thing where I think is pretty unique is that you, in many of your videos, you sort of bring people in kind of behind the scenes, behind the curtain to give them the opportunity to let them get to know you in real life situations. And I've seen videos where you were living in a Tesla one time for, I think, 24 hours. I've yeah. seen videos with you moving your cat and doing different things with your cat or breaking some news to your mom. I mean, all real life stuff 
that it's real. It's there. You feel like you're part of it. So what inspired you to do that, to really let people in kind of behind the curtain, so to speak? And were you nervous at all about doing that, being so open and transparent with your followers? Well, all my followers are my besties, so it really just comes natural. Like, I want to let them know what's going on in my life. Like, I really feel whenever I'm recording, I'm just on FaceTime with them. So, like, they're my friend. And I really like giving them that feeling as well because I get a lot of messages every day from my supporters letting me know how much I help them in their day-to-day -day life. Just, like, just because there's so many of them, I can't help them individually, so I'm glad that my videos that I put out for them can help them personally, you know? Well, I'll tell you what, in what you just said, I think that separates you from so many other people who maybe are just targeting milestones. Oh, I have to get to this number of followers or that number of right. followers. And for someone who has over a million subscribers on their YouTube channel, oh, what are we looking at there? This is Ramane, Ramanu, Ramane. It's a Japanese drink. It's Got Hello Kitty on it, and it and it has a little dingling. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. But again, I, I have to tell you, I just think it's so cool that you said you're basically sharing these aspects of your life with your besties, not just numbers or, or bots out there. These You look at these followers and fans as your besties, that you're bringing along the journey with you. Which, which is something I don't think too many people really do. Or maybe they pretend they're doing it, but you're actually doing it. Yeah, I, I appreciate you for seeing that because that's really just my goal. Like, I don't see everyone as, as just numbers because I literally have had 100,000 subscribers for a minute. And, like, obviously because I just hit a million. But just to think, like, I didn't get my plaque for – two years and I had it I was going up 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 I didn't get my plaque and I didn't get I literally didn't care like I was just like well at least like I'm just happy I have the supporters like it wasn't all about the plaque for me and some I know some subscribers it is I mean not some subscribers some youtubers it is but I mean as it should be because you're obviously like putting a lot of work and effort into mm -hmm. you know building that fan base but for me it was just like I mean, I'll get it one day. Like, I don't know why YouTube didn't send it, but at least I still have my besties and I can still post for them. Well, there you go. And I know that one of the things I've heard from some younger up and coming independent artists these days is that when they're looking to maybe get a record deal or some type of deal, one of the first things that they get asked is how many followers do you have? How many subscribers do you have? You know, on the various social media. And some of these people may be really talented, but maybe they're not connecting, you know, in the same way that you are. And to have over a million sub, uh, subscribers on YouTube and over half a million, almost 600,000 on TikTok and several hundred thousand on Instagram. I mean, that is a lot of hard work, but it doesn't happen by accident. It's because you're putting content out there that people gravitate to and they stay with you. So, again, I just think that's a testament to what you're putting out and how you're putting it out. And speaking of what's getting put out, as of the time we're recording our conversation, we are about 20 hours away from the release of something pretty Painted special. Painted Paradise! Hey, Painted Paradise drops tomorrow, you guys, October 22nd. So if it's already after that, by the time this is posted, y'all need to go stream it, iTunes, Spotify. I'm releasing this for everyone as a thank you for a million subscribers. So wow. I'm really excited. I I produce not produce, but I <laughs> I edited and like directed my music video. Like this was my first time editing and directing like the whole music video for this new song. So I'm really excited to let it out. So you're performing, you're directing, and you're editing. So I, I have to ask, because I didn't know that going in. So what was the most challenging part? Or, or, you know, I'm assuming you've done some of this to some level before, but what's what's the most challenging part of doing all those different roles? I mean, the performing I really had down, I had to ask some of my friends, like my boyfriend and my best friend, I had to ask them for help to record it, which... I felt bad for it because it was last minute, but they really pulled through and 
it came out really, really nice. And I think the hardest part was just, I thought it was going to be easier than it was, but honestly, like I put it together, I figured it out and I made it exactly how I wanted it and how I envisioned it in my head. Well, you know what? That's a win-win because I'll tell you, I, I can say for what it's worth, when Rosie and I first started doing our show together six years ago, and I've done some things as well, the hardest thing for me was the editing. And the first couple times you spent a whole weekend putting something together and you hit that delete button one time too many, oops, that can that can be ugly. But that's that, the that was difficult for me because since I was doing it myself, like every time I would take a break from it, like I would be like, okay, I'm, I'm done editing. Like I need to take a little time not to look at it and then look at it again. Um, I would be like super nervous that I would hit delete and I would try to like just exit out of the app. Like hopefully it doesn't delete. Even when I was saving the project to my camera roll. So that way I could look at it and see if it was the complete one when I was towards the end of the process. Um, I was terrified to like click done because I felt like if I clicked done, then I wouldn't have all the work I spent sure. <laughs> into editing it. So editing was definitely the hardest part, but directing was my favorite part. Yeah. Especially when I think, it, um, I mean, I'm assuming anyway, that it must be cool when you have that vision, like you, you've got in your head and in your mind, what you want it to look like, what you want it to sound like. So to be in that position where you can direct it and then edit it and put it all together. I mean, that, I don't know that it can get any better than that. Even though it's a lot of hard work, that's got to be really cool to be able to bring your vision to life and then be able to see it and edit yeah, it. Yeah, it felt really cool because I've I've always done that since I was young. Like I did it on stage when I was a, like a dancing, performing, and I've done it in shows. I've brought my vision to life. But same thing with YouTube, like and acting but I just felt different actually editing a whole music video because mm -hmm. it was like my idea and I actually placed it like instead of me like having the idea and then performing it and someone else bringing it to life with the mm -hmm. editing like I did I played both parts so it was really cool really cool experience yeah. I definitely do want to work with other videographers and editors of course but I'm really liking the idea of like I'm really I'm really happy that I'm able to put out Painted Paradise because now I know like my ability and like that I could just do it myself. Well, and I think moving forward, when you when you are working with someone, you'll now know some of those nuances and some of the things from a directing and editing standpoint, you won't be going in cold. You'll have exactly. a pretty good idea of how me, those parts yeah, go. It helps hella. Yeah, no, that's that's phenomenal. So congratulations on that. I know by the time this airs, it will have been out. So everybody better go check it out. And if they haven't subscribed to your YouTube channel, they need to do that too. Period. What he said, P-R-Y-M-R-R -R on all platforms, Painted Paradise on YouTube is the music video. You can listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere, everywhere you want it. And don't let spell check mess it up when you're trying to put your name in there in YouTube. <laughs> the spell checks frustrated me a couple times, but the coolest name and the coolest spelling by far, as long as spell check doesn't mess it up. Thank you so much. No, absolutely. You are very welcome. So other than the new video that just came out, as we said, as of the time this airs, it will have just come out a few days before. Anything else you have in the works for the rest of 24 or kind of looking into 25 that you can share with us? I'm like, can I share it? So let me just let you know, I'm working on a streetwear brand right now. This is my first time announcing it or even talking about it. So I, I hope everyone's going to be excited about it. It's it's not like merch because um, it's not really, it's, it's going to be more of a streetwear brand. So okay. I'm going to be releasing a whole line this upcoming year. So I'm really excited about that. That sounds like the the potential of being something really big. And I wish you all the best with that. And I appreciate you sharing that. Now, that was kind of looking forward. What I'd like to do now is reverse gears just for a minute and kind of look back, Premier. If you look back, because you've been doing this for a long time. You said you were start you started dancing when you were two years old and you've been loving performing ever since. Is there any one thing as you look back that you would say you're most proud of? Oh, that's a good question. I'm probably most proud of my 
I'm really proud of myself. Like my career goes so way, way back because being an entertainer has been my dream like ever since I was born. So I literally hated girls clothes and I went to my closet and I pulled out the only dress I owned and I told my mom, I want to be a dancer and I put it on and I started dancing for her at two years old and she put me in ballet classes. So then I moved on to hip hop, the whole shebang. And I really, I went to so many competitions. I got through so many levels of ballet and then I started auditions and that was really a huge step for me because it was like, the start of my career was getting an agent and going out to LA every week for a random audition. Like I really had to switch up my life in a positive way, but it it felt different because I couldn't have anything scheduled. I had to be ready on the go right then. If I got an email, you have an audition in an hour. Like my mom would have to get me, let's go to LA. And I lived an hour and a half from LA at the time. So It was a lot of back and forth, but uh, shout out to my mom, shout out to her because she really helped a lot with that. And that's how my career got started. So I'm really proud of that. But I'd have to say my proudest moment would probably be Alien Stock. It was this crazy vine that went viral of this guy saying that let's raid Area 51. I don't know if you ever heard about that. It went viral on Facebook. And it was like, I have heard of it. Yeah. It was like, let's raid area 51. (laughs) And everyone was like, let's raid it. Cause at that point, like they hadn't announced that aliens were real and stuff, even though everyone already knew, but you know, now they haven't announced, but back then they didn't. And so like the news went, it was turning into a whole festival, like almost like said to be like burning man. And there was going to be like thousands of people there. But then the guy who was running it ended up like, tapping out like he just like backed off of it even though he had all these performers ready stages booked a bathrooms booked like he had the location booked and he kind of left it all on this like person to handle either way there's going to be a whole documentary coming out about it that I will be in so y'all better look out for that too but either way I'm most proud of that because it was a pretty big performance I was performing for the three days of the whole thing. We slept in the car and the back of the stage. And it was all the way in Nevada, like in this really, like literally right next to Area 51. And Mm. I performed in front of a bunch of people and it was really, really cool. No, that is phenomenal. I look forward to that document. So it's a documentary they're going to be coming out with then you said, right? Yeah, there will be a documentary about Area 51, like Alien Stock, the whole festival coming out. But I do... I do have a performance video on my YouTube channel of me performing there. And yeah, I was just looking at that a few days ago and that made me think of that. Like, that's just, I was really proud of myself. I'm looking back. I'm really proud of myself in that moment because I was young and I think that was like the first big performance I've ever done. Like I performed before, but that, it was pretty big. Absolutely. And, and anytime they're making a documentary about something that makes it even bigger and then it, it's there forever. They're, they're, you know, right. it, you also have the video that you referenced too. And Premier, as you're talking about these things, uh, one of the things that I'm wondering, especially since you started so young, is that I don't know that everybody understands the work, the time, the effort that goes into what you've become and are still growing and evolving into. But there's probably been a lot of sacrifices and things along the way too, haven't there? I mean, yeah, it's like, how could they, you couldn't really expect someone who doesn't do the type of work you do to understand because it's all an image thing. Like you're putting out what you want people to know. Like Mm. you don't have to post how hard it is because people don't really care. Like people would rather just see, all the great content you're going to put out. Like people don't want to hear you complaining because people who don't do it don't understand how hard it is. Like they think that it's so easy, but clearly it's not, but I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm living the dream. I'm doing exactly what I want to do and I'm going big places. For sure. And I think that to me, it's not really complaining when it's, you're just kind of acknowledging that there's a lot of work. There's a lot of sacrifices. There's things maybe other kids when you were younger were doing, 
that you weren't doing because you were practicing, you were working on a routine or you were rehearsing. So, but that's also why you're where you're at today. And from what I can see is you're just getting started. You've got the possibilities for you and your talent and your positivity. That That's another thing that's really infectious, I think, about you and really comes through in your videos is the positivity. So now we looked back and I asked you what you were most proud of. I want to switch gears for my last question and ask you to kind of look ahead and think about this. What do you think success would ultimately look like for you? Oh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to explain that. Like, honestly, I feel like once you reach a certain goal, like I just hit a million, which I will be having a meet and greet soon hey, in LA, Burbank. Y'all pull up meet and greet in Burbank for hitting a million subscribers. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and pull up. If you are subscribed, Bessie, you better be there. But anyway, <laughs> um, I really love to spread positivity because that's all you can really do because if you're negative, your only negative things are going to come back to you. Like everything you put out into the universe is what's going to come back to you. And I try to be as positive as possible. Obviously, nobody's perfect and everyone gets negative thoughts in their head. But I try not to spread that onto the people around me or the people looking up to me because that's not what they should be learning. And yeah. they should be looking at the positive things like, is this half full or half empty? Mm -hmm. Some people who look at it half empty like they're probably sitting on their couch all day so look at it half full and you're gonna make that money <laughs> yeah and and the thing is if if you if you work hard and you believe in yourself and you just keep going and, and talent helps and you clearly have that it, it's a great combination so i want to thank you so much for, for joining me and i also want to thank you for for spreading that positivity because I mentioned it earlier. And that's one thing it literally comes through, whether it's a music video or any of the kinds of videos we mentioned earlier, there's definitely a positive vibe and a smile that comes along in just about everyone I've seen. And I think anyone who watched it is going to appreciate that. And it's going to help make your day better. That makes me happy because I, I never want to come off in a rude way. So that makes me happy yet. Every time I meet, like, my supporters out in public, like, anytime, like, they'll text me, like, oh, I saw you, like, they'll DM me or comment on my stuff, like, I saw you, but I didn't go up to you because I was scared. I'm like, don't be scared. Like, I'm not trying to be mean. Like, I'm nice. Premier, I have to say this one thing. I There was a video I watched the other day, and I think you were, I, th I think you guys were going to get shoes or sneakers for your sister like was going to school, starting school or something. And you went in the line in this, this shoe place just went on forever. And so you're there and you were in there for hours and, and you're cutting away. And it's like two hours, three hours later, whatever <laughs> yes, it was, I but remember just this. making the best of it and just having fun. And I'm thinking, I think most people would have lost their minds after like a half an hour or an hour, but yeah, it looked like you guys like, were all making the best of it. And that line was shoes. so long. Like it was insane. So yeah, literally it was fun though. I, I love shoes. Fun fact, my first word as a baby was shoes. And if you could see my closet, <laughs> you can't, but if y'all know my closet, y'all know my closet. Like it's so packed with shoes. So I love shoes, even though I'd probably prefer being, barefoot but i still love shoes well there you go so. and, and again it was you know turning lemons into lemonade because you guys had fun even though that line seemed to go on forever and took hours and hours that's just an example literally of the kind and of way i love lemonade positive and going back on what you said earlier when you were like when you're a kid like did you have to make sacrifices mm -hmm. for your entertainment industry job like when people look at it, child actors, child performers, like they don't really under, I don't know if they fully understand that it is a job because mm. a lot of kids will say like, like I, I, I just know me, I'm not going to talk for anyone else, but I just know me when I was on the red carpet at like 11, like, I don't know, like nine, I would, they would ask me like, do you still get to like, be like a kid? Do you have to make sacrifices? Like, how is it like? doing like being an actor being an artist and I just would 
always say like I still get to do kid stuff I'm still like a kid which I was but I don't think every kid goes on the red carpet and says that so (laughs) I definitely did have to like I said make changes because it was it was different like I had I couldn't make plans with my friends I couldn't make plans with my family I couldn't make plans because any time I'm getting, I'm getting called in. I have to get called in and I have to get out. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. And it's like you said, there, there are times when you could get that call or that email and, and you got to be ready to turn on a dime. So even if there were plans, those plans are going to change. Right. But, they have to. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. I, I, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. It's like you said earlier, kind of what you put out comes back. So all of those things, I think, you're not just talking about it. You're living it. You're putting it out there as content for people to see and experience and take the journey with you. So I just want to thank you, Premier, for coming on the spotlight, sharing part of your journey with us here. And it's been great getting to know you. I wish you all the best with the video that just came out, with the news you shared about some things that are going to be coming up in the near future and everything ahead, because I think for you, possibilities are endless. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me on the spotlight, period. Make sure to stream Hootie, Where You At, W-Y-A, and Monsters, and Painted Paradise, you guys. Like, it's literally brand new, just dropped. Y'all need to listen to it. Yeah, and on those prior videos, make sure you look and see about the story behind the lyrics of the songs, because that's what I did. I did that first before watching the videos, and I was glad I did. It's like, watching the trailer of a movie almost, but more personalized Period. because it's not so, just random. So I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little re up, a little behind the scenes, little, little painted paradise moment since I haven't posted it for that yet. So for painted paradise, I feel like the song is really about um, my childhood and just about like finding the beauty and the like, color the happiness in like a maybe a dark or maybe not like dark but maybe like not the best situation like Mm. making the best out of what you have and knowing like basically like like your life like love yours if you know Mm. that song love yours like it's kind of i that song well i just thought of it but it's kind of, I like it because it's giving like that. And then it's also yeah. giving like summer vibes, like sunsets. So. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's making the best of the situation. And again, another phenomenal positive message. So thanks for sharing that with our viewers. I know they appreciate it and I know they're going to enjoy the video. So again, thanks. Thanks for everything you've shared with us, Premier. I really do appreciate it. Wish you all the best. And folks, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Strawberry, vanilla, blueberry skies. Feeling like Easter with the eggs and the dice. Don't like surprises, just feeling like lies. Can't cry no more, just want to get high. Lost in the clouds, smoking all these pounds. Can't even touch the ground, don't want to come down. Anti-social, need my time. Away from these crowds, my head spinning around. What's with all these hounds? Telling me how to live my life. Why you stay subscribed? I ain't even 25. Doing my shit makes you upset. I ain't even rich yet. I don't need the disrespect. Oh, you in debt? You just trying to reflect. Don't kill me right now. This is all a project and all a first time living. I don't need to be perfect. Get my money just a given. I put myself in this position. Get a diss from a distance. Pretty sunset skies, a canvas divine. Strawberry, vanilla, blueberry into wine. A symphony of colors, a feast for the eyes. In this painted paradise, beauty never dies. Pretty sunset skies, a canvas divine Strawberry, vanilla, blueberry into wine A symphony of colors, a feast for the eyes In this painted paradise, beauty never dies